Okay, one more session of chronographing 357 Magnum loads out of a handgun versus long guns, comparing velocity, see what the barrel length does to velocity. These are more common uh, over-the-counter loads you're going to find. The previous video had Underwood and Buffalo Bore. This is the more common stuff you're going to find when you go to the big box stores, your Cabela's, your Bass Pro Shops, Walmart, that they still sell it. Is your Remington, 110 grain, jacketed hollow point, Federal, 125 grain, jacketed hollow point, and Federal, 158 grain, jacketed soft point. The guns are the same as before, a 3 inch Smith & Wesson L frame, a 16 inch 1892 reproduction carbine and a full-size 24 inch 1892 rifle. So here we go. First up, the Remington 110 grain semi-jacketed hollow point out of the 3 inch L frame. 1336 and 1327. Same load out of the 16 inch carbine. Seventeen fifty two and seventeen seventy eight. Okay, same Remington 110 grain hollow point out of the 24 inch rifle. 1835 and 1858. Next up, the Federal 125 grain jacketed hollow point. This load's almost legendary. It's been out forever, <coughs> and for a long time, it had the highest one-shot stop rating of any handgun load out there. Not just any 357, but any handgun load. I'm not the biggest worshiper at the altar of one-shot stops, but... This load's been a really good one for a really long time. Okay, Federal 125 out of a three inch revolver. 1314 and 1424. Same Federal 125 out of the 16 inch carbine. 2003 and 2049. I've never fired this load out of the 24 inch gun. I got no idea what it'll do out of it. Here you go, the Federal 125 grain jacket at hollow point from the full size 1892 24 inch rifle. 2134. eleven. Not as big a jump between the carbine and the rifle as between the handgun and the carbine. 
last up. The Federal 158 grain jacket at soft point. First out of the three inch revolver. 1221 and 1237. Federal 158 grain soft point out of the 16 inch carbine. 1756 and 1796. And last up. The 158 grain Federal jacket at South Point out of the 24 inch 1892 rifle. 1863 and 1860. Okay, we'll get these put into the spreadsheet and then check them out. And here we have the results here in the spreadsheet. Looking at the revolver first, the 110 grain Remington, pretty typical for a short barrel revolver, 1331 feet per second. Uh, that's not blazing fast for a 357, but it is what it is. The Federal 125 grain averaged 1369, so it was actually faster than the Remington and the Remington was using a lighter bullet, so it was lighter and slower. The 158 grain Federal, 1229, so a little heavier, which is to be expected with a heavier bullet. Energy-wise, the Remington 110 being the lightest bullet and not particularly fast, 433 feet, I'm sorry, foot-pounds of energy. The 125 grain Federal, even from a short three-inch revolver, over 500 foot-pounds of energy. That's what I was mentioning earlier. That, that's that been a very well-respected load for decades now. The 158 grain, even from the three-inch revolver, because of the weight of the bullet, uh, 530 roughly foot-pounds of energy. So that's plenty respectable. But if we look at the difference between going from the three-inch revolver to the 16 inch carbine. We went from 1331 feet per second to 1765. So from 430 foot pounds of energy to 760. That is a huge jump. From the 24 inch gun, over 800 foot pounds of energy. Darn near double, 92% increase in power from the rifle versus the revolver. The 125 grain Federal more than doubled the power uh, from the 3 inch going to the 16 inch. Went from 520 foot pounds to over 1100. Going to the 24 inch rifle, 1310 roughly foot pounds of energy. So we went from 520 to over 1300. We gained 803 feet per second just by virtue of shooting it out of a rifle instead of a revolver. That is a major power difference there. The 158 grain, not as huge a percentage just because the bullet's heavier and it's having to work harder for it. But again, going from the 3 inch revolver to even to the little 16 inch carbine. Uh, more than doubled the power of that round. 529, 530 foot-pounds of energy versus more than 1,100 foot-pounds of energy. For comparison, a typical 16-inch AR, which you know is kind of everybody's benchmark nowadays, 
you're running about 1,100 foot-pounds, 1,150 maybe. So even the little 16-inch lever gun in the quote-unquote pistol caliber, 357 Magnum, is as powerful as your AR-15 carbine in 223 or 5.56. And that 16-inch carbine is a little gun. It's actually smaller than a Ruger... 1022 rimfire. I'll, I'll put up a picture of it here toward the end, but it is literally that compact. That's not just hyperbole. It is physically smaller than a Ruger 1022 and putting out the power of an AR-15. So, pretty handy little package. Makes a neat little gun for your 4x4, your uh, you know, four-wheeler, your UTV, that kind of thing. It just makes a neat little brush gun. So anyway, I hope that uh, helps. Again, this is this is different from the first 357 chronograph session I did because that one was really checking what was possible, what the capabilities of a 357 were if you were pushing the edge of the envelope. That had Underwood ammo, Buffalo Bore ammo. These are just plain Jane milk toast off the shelf loads you're going to find at your big box stores. This is, this is probably the most ubiquitous, common 357 Magnum loads out there. Uh, and just, it's impressive to see the difference that even that little 16-inch carbine gets over a handgun. That, that extra barrel length really gives that 357 a lot more oomph behind it than it would otherwise have. So there we have it. I hope someone finds this either entertaining or useful. I appreciate it.